like the word patience especially when it applies to yourself oh be impatient with yourself that's hard oh it's really hard patience is hard but you got to have patience with yourself and that's what we're going to focus on today we all want results ASAP as soon as possible I want this today tomorrow I want it yesterday but in our heart of hearts 
come on now, in your heart of hearts, you know that good things take time. And it takes time. It just takes time. That's what it takes. You just slow down. Have patient endurance. I love that phrase, patient endurance. Have patient endurance. Stick with it and be patient with yourself. It is hard. I know it. But, you know. What do you want to do? <laughs> you got to just stick with it. And I'm glad you're sticking with your yoga. I'm Jan. This is 316 Yoga. This is where you're going to practice your patient endurance. This is a one hour long yoga practice. We practice every single day of the week. We practice on YouTube. We practice on Facebook. Catch us on either venue, either platform. What we do is a one hour long live practice. So it's just like being in a class. If you can't catch it live, you can watch the recording. But if you can be here live, you know, go for it. Why not? It makes it fun. It makes it feel like you're in a real class without the intimidation. No intimidation zone because you're at home. You're doing your yoga from home. You're dressed the way you want to be dressed. You are having the props that you want to have. And you don't have to worry about how it looks. You should never worry about how a pose looks. You want to think about how it feels. Let it feel good in your body. Do it your way. But the biggest thing is the bottom of our screen says don't hurt. If something hurts, back out of it. Don't do it. I mean, listen to your body. Listen to your body and have patient endurance with yourself. It'll come with time. The, the trick is to just keep showing up. Every day our practices are different. You, you know, figure out what works for you. You know, taking a pose to 10% or taking a pose to, you know, 0%. Skip a pose. But just, just do. Show up and do. We use props every day. Today the props we're going to use are usual two blocks. We use those just about every day. The blocks are great. Think of them as bringing the ground up to you and many other wonderful things. So you want to have your two blocks, an eye shade and a little hand towel. Um, you might want to use a strap or a belt or, you know, um, a jump rope, whatever. You got one of those lying around right? <laughs> and have some water handy too. But just do what you can. Today's practice, like I said, it's one hour where we focus on uh, flexibility and mobility. And it's all down on the mat today. Other practices aren't. Other days of the week, everything is different. Check us out. Okay, so the word to think about as you practice today is life is a journey, right? It's a journey. Some days are longer than others. Some days things fly by. It's just a wonderful journey. It's all good. Your yoga is a journey. Journey means passage or progress from one stage to another. And we're all on that uh, progress. We're all on that path, right? Take one day at a time and take your yoga one day at a time as well. Maybe take it one breath at a time. But if you stick with your yoga and stay on that journey, your yoga is going to be really good to you. You're going to discover flexibility, mobility, and greater strength. Stick around and see. Enjoy the progress. Enjoy the process and enjoy the journey. Now let's go. All right. You got your props. You're seated. Come down into what's called a Sukhasana pose. All right, this isn't for everybody. It doesn't feel great for everybody. Try it and see. If you don't like it, sit any way you like. So crisscross applesauce, remember that with the kids? Maybe you sit crisscross applesauce. As you come into your Sukhasana pose, think of a stress number, scale of one to five, one to 10. Where are you? And let's work on bringing that number down. Now I'm gonna crisscross my legs, but I'm gonna take one leg and I'm gonna bring it up on top of the other. This is called your Sukhasana pose. It's also called easy pose. I don't know why it's called easy pose because it's not particularly easy, but you're getting into your hips and that's what we're focusing on today. Your hips, I mean, such big, the big ball and socket in your hips. Movement is so important and your hips, are the, the, the biggest joints you got making that happen. All right, so you're seated comfortably, right? Maybe take the block. Maybe that'll make it more comfortable and put it under your top knee. You can have a full-size block or a half-size block, or maybe put a towel under there. It's all good as long as you're getting the movement and you're not hurting, plain and simple. All right, so lengthen up. Put your hands on your hips and just breathe. Deep breath in. Sigh it out. Deep breath out through your mouth. Just let it go. Nobody's here. <sighs> you have peace on your mat. This is your place of peace. In through your nose with a deep breath. Think of it as refreshing. <sighs> Sigh that breath out through your mouth. Let it go. And here's the hard part. Maybe even harder than sitting however you got your legs. It's quieting the mind. Coming into the present moment. And how do you do that? You breathe deeply. Maybe you close your lips and you focus on the sound of that breath in the back of your throat. With each inhale, you feel your chest get stronger as it expands to the side of the room and up. And as you exhale, feel your shoulders soften, but just breathe. 
just know that you can do this. Breathe in, breathe out. Think of your knees, your legs as heavy and just kind of melting into the mat. All right, if you've got a block nearby, maybe bring it in front of your legs at the midline of your body. You can do this with your eyes closed. We're gonna lift our arms up, lift them both on up to the sky. Think extended mountain arms, reach up high, keeping your shoulders over your hips. Now cactus out your arms, what do I mean by that? Bring your elbows in line with your shoulders, forearms parallel to the walls at the side of your room, palms shining forward, squeeze your elbows to the back of the room. You look like a cactus, right? Lengthen up, exhale, soften up through the shoulders. On an inhale, reach your arms back up to that extended mountain pose, and then let both arms, like you're playing the game, hands down, if that still exists. <laughs> let your arms be long as your palms come down. Find that block, slide the block forward, and stretch it out. All right, leave the block however far you take it. Sweep your arms back up to your extended mountain. Let's flow through this a few times. Lengthen up. Now cactus out the arms, driving the backs of the hands to the back of the room. Lengthen up through your extended mountain fingertips. Exhale, hands down, reach forward, find your block, push it even farther forward, maybe. Sweep your arms around to your side, send them back up, extended mountain. Big breath in, the secret's in your breath. Exhale, cactus the arms, chest is lifted. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hands down to the block. Maybe push the block even farther. One more time, arms sweep on up, extended mountain. Cactus arms as you exhale. Inhale, arms go back up. One more time, hands down, forward reach. Inhale, arms sweep up to your extended mountain and bring them back down to your knees. Take a big breath in. And a big shoulder softening breath out. Seated cat cow. We've done cat cow on all fours. Let's do it in this seated position. The trick is your chin and your belly button. Exhale, chin to your chest, belly button back towards your spine, round your back like a cat. Inhale, cow, crown of the head lifts, chin up to the sky. Think of your belly kind of sagging toward the front of the room. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat, curving your spine to the shape of the letter C. Inhale, cow, taking it in the other direction. Chin up to the sky. Feel the goodness in the stretch of the front of your neck. Maybe one more time, cat. And cow. <sighs> Come back to neutral. That good head is over your shoulders. Lengthen up here. Exhale. Walk your hands forward. And you're blocking. Just move it aside. Walk your hands forward. Your gaze is down toward your ankles. Now spider walk your fingers to the right side of your body. Let your left hand come on top of your right. Maybe interlace your fingers. Breathe here. Squeeze the hands. Maybe pull. Release the hands, spider walk your fingers back to the midline, just take a breather here, and then let your fingers spider walk to the left side of your body. Nice big stretch on the left side now. Right hand comes on top of the left, squeeze your fingers together, breathe. Keep both bottom cheeks down. Walk your spider fingers back to the midline. Reach and extend long here, breathe in, breathe out. Spider walk again to the right, Left hand on top of right, interlaced fingers, squeeze, stretch, both bottom cheeks down. Back to the midline, over to the left, right on top of left, squeeze. Hands back to the midline, lengthen out. Walk the hands back to the midline of the body. Come on up, shoulders over your hips, hands to your heart. Be still. Find your heartbeat. How often do you really feel and find the heartbeat in your chest? Take a big breath in and a big breath out. 
All right, let's go to the other hip now, okay? Release your hands, release your legs, change them up. I don't know how you were sitting, just change them up. Maybe crisscross applesauce, the other leg in front and the other leg down, or sukhasana pose with the opposite leg. I'm gonna now bring my left leg up on top. Hands on your knees. Remember, you can always put that block underneath. Close your eyes, come back to the stillness in your mind. No racing thoughts, no worrying about the future. Who knows what's gonna happen? And don't think about the past, don't dwell in it. Life is not a movie. You can't hit rewind and relive it. Live in the present moment. Breathe in, breathe out. Think of the hips, it's just kind of melting down to the earth as you just relax here. Breathe in, breathe out. All right, where's the block? Find it. Bring it in front of your legs. Inhale, lengthen up to your extended mountain pose. Remember when we did this little cactus sequence? Think extended mountain. Now cactus, backs of the hands to the back of the room. Extended mountain, lift. Hands down to the block. Push the block forward to a level that's comfortable for you. Feel the nice stretch. Ooh, my left leg is on top, so I'm really feeling it in my left glutes, my left hip. Mm-hmm. Inhale, sweep your arms back up, extended mountain. Cactus out the arms, drive the elbows to the back of the room. Chest is lifted, you are strong. Good posture this creates. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hands down. Find the block, maybe push it more forward. <sighs> Hollow out the belly, bringing your navel to your spine, reach. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Cactus out your arms as you exhale. Inhale, arms sweep up. Oh, your shoulders are loving you for doing this. Hands down, reach towards your block. Push it out. Inhale, arms sweep up. Cactus out your arms, chest is lifted, elbows even more to the back of the room. Eyes closed for fun. Inhale, arms sweep up. And I think that's it on this one. Bring your hands down to your knees. Lengthen up through the crown of your head. Exhale, soften in your shoulders. Seated cat cow. When you're ready, tuck your chin to your chest. Tailbone tucks in, navel to your spine. Inhale, cow. Crown of the head lifts, you got it. Let's do it again. Inhale, chin goes up. Cat, as you exhale. Inhale, cow. And then finish, rest your shoulders over your hips, chin slightly tucked, crown of your head lifts. Remember those extended mountain arms? Let's do them again, lengthen them on up. Hands come down and reach forward on the earth. Don't need to do the block. Hands reach forward, spider walk your fingers toward the right. Left hand on top of right, interlaced fingers, pull. Breathe in, breathe out. Release your fingers, spider walk them back to the middle, take a breath here. Spider walk your fingers to the left side. Interlaced fingers, right hand on top of left, pull. And then walk them back to center. And you know, maybe you're thinking, oh, I just can't do it. Well, yes, you can do it, because you take it a little less if you need to. You decide, spider walk your fingers the way that's right for you. End up back at center, and then do it again. Take a big, long stretch. One more time, spider walk fingers to one direction. The outside hand goes on top, stretch, pull, squeeze. Spider walk back to the midline. Take a breather here. Big breath in. Big breath out. Other side. The arm that's on the outside goes on top of the other hand. Squeeze the fingers together. Arms walk back to the midline of your body. Stretch it out. Reach it out. Reach your fingers far. Slowly roll your shoulder. Slowly roll on up your spine, bringing your shoulders back over your hips. 
This time, place your hands on your heart here. Eyes are closed. Find your heartbeat. Take a deep breath in. It's in there, I promise. It's in there and it's ticking. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Slow down. Be patient with you. You did it just right because you were here. You showed up. All right, release your hands back down to your knees. Take a big breath in and a big breath out. How are your hips feeling already? Kind of a passive time. A lot of focus on your arms and moving the upper body to get your mind out of your hips because it's pretty intense. Let's come out of it now, shall we? All right, let's come into a thunderbolt pose. All right, for this one, you want to sit back on your heels. So bend your knees, have a seat on your heels, hands on your knees. Oh, breathe in, breathe out, soften in the shoulders, lengthen up through the crown of your head. Let's do a few things for our neck. Plain and simple, if it feels good for you, start to turn your head from left to right, right to left. Eyes can be closed. And if that doesn't feel good, if you know you kind of got that vertigo thing going on or it just you don't want to close your eyes, don't do it. Just keep the eyes open. Closing the eyes is just kind of nice as it allows you to focus inward. Just turn your head. There are no quick fixes. Take your time, just enjoy, and don't think about rushing ahead to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Enjoy how this feels. How does it feel in your neck? Where do you feel it? Finish up with the head back at the midline of the body. We did this in cat-cow. We tucked the chin to the chest. Go ahead and do it again. Soften in the shoulders. Inhale, let the chin go up to the sky and feel the nice stretch in the front of your neck. Shoulders stay soft and relaxed. All right, so in your low body, you're not even thinking about it, but your ankle is in a plantar flexion. So you're kind of stretching the ankle in a direction that it normally doesn't go in. Your knees are getting a nice stretch and your quads are too. Breathe in, breathe out. Chin to chest, chin to the sky. And then finish, head back to the midline of your body. Shrug your shoulders a couple times, up and back. And then let your shoulders soften. You can keep your eyes closed for this one. Lengthen up through the crown of your head. Lift your left arm up like you did in your extended mountain pose. Bend your left elbow and bring your left hand on top of your right ear. Let the left ear go towards your left shoulder and breathe. So your hand, your left hand is on top of your right ear. It's just touching the top of the ear and the hand is encouraging the left ear to the left shoulder. Nice big stretch all up the right side of your neck. Keep your shoulder on the right side soft. Breathe here. Of course you're breathing here, right? Deep breaths in, deep breaths out. Don't let your breath become shallow. Your breath is a good indicator of stress. If your breath is shallow, you're stressed. Back out of the pose, don't do it so intensely. Your breath should be long and deep, allowing you to find peace. Let's finish, slowly remove the hand and then the head slowly bring it back up to the midline. Both hands are down on your thighs, lengthen up through the crown of your head. We have another side to do, soften up in your shoulders. Lift your right arm up to the sky. Find length there like we did when we did that extended mountain earlier. Bend your right elbow. Take your right hand on top of your left ear and encourage your head to the right side of your body. Right ear to the right shoulder. Your hand is strong. It's touching the top of your left ear. Your left shoulder is soft and down. You're getting a nice stretch in the neck here and your hand is helping you do that. Breathe in, breathe out. It all takes time. This is time well invested. Time well invested in yourself. And the beauty of it is it not only affects your body and your emotion and your ability to move, but it affects your emotions as well and how you feel in your head and how you feel in your spirit. Breathe. Soften. You're not going anywhere. You're staying right here. Let it feel as good as it can in this moment. 
as you're ready, slowly release your hand and then slowly, slowly bring your head back up to the midline. Hands down on your thighs, lengthen up. Exhale, soften up, soften in those shoulders. Your shoulders aren't earrings. Don't keep them up close to your ears. Soften them and let them go. All right, let's take our arms. Bend your arms, bend your elbows, bring your uh, fingertips lightly to your temples. Wake up the back of your neck. Send your elbows toward the back of the room. Chest is lifted, nice, strong strength. You're getting here in your upper body. So many of us were hunched over with our heads hanging down as we look down to our phones. Breathe here, breathe here, stretch. Lengthen through the crown of your head, drive the elbows more to the back of the room. Now your elbows, maybe bring them to meet at the front of your face, kind of at chin level, and then bring them back out. Extend them long, send the elbows way back, and exhale, bring them close to meet. As close as you can, maybe it's not very close at all. That's all right, just move them. Breathe. Strong, elbows are lifted, elbows open wide, elbows come toward your nose, your chin, open them up wide and then close them on up. Bring your arms on down to your hands, or bring your arms on down to your hands, that would be good. Bring your arms on down, hands to your thighs, lengthen up and exhale. Let's do a wide-legged child's pose. All right, here's the deal. You come to your knees. How do your shoulders feel? Should feel pretty good. We've already done the hips, we've done the knees, we've done the quads, and we've done a lot with your shoulders. Feels pretty good. Wide-legged child's pose. Knees spread a bit or a lot. Knees, hips, um, toes, big toes touch. Hips back to your heels. Reach your arms long to the top of the mat. We're gonna do a little evolution here. From a child's pose, which you are in now, an extended child's pose, arms reaching long to the top of the mat. You can have a bend in your elbows if that feels better. Head is down to either your block, if you like, or to your mat. Knees are spread. You're finding length in your spine. Help it out a little bit by sending your tailbone more to the back of the room and pushing into your hands as you find length in your spine here. Breathe in, breathe out, deep breaths. Here's the evolution. We're gonna go to a tadpole, then we're gonna go to a full frog. Spread your knees a little bit wider. Maybe you bring your knees off of your mat. If that doesn't feel good, you know, maybe you're on your mat at, at a 90 degree angle to what I am at to allow your knees to have all that space of your mat to spread out. So you're working the inner thighs here. You're spreading the knees wide. You're reaching your arms long to the top of the mat with your forehead on your block or your mat. Breathe. It's not particularly comfortable, but it's also not painful for me. You assess it. That's a question to ask yourself in a lot of poses. All right, it doesn't feel so great, but as long as it's not painful, I'm okay. If it's uncomfortable, hmm, think about that. Think about breaking through that threshold and getting beyond it. All right, knees are spread wide. Now let's go to full frog. To do that, work your shins more parallel to the sides of your mat. Breathe in, breathe out. I say it often, breathe through the discomfort. Uh, you can do it. Send your tailbone back even more. This is your flexibility and mobility practice after all. We're gonna find it here. You gotta kind of push the limits to break through. Soften in your jaws. If your teeth are touching, just kind of unclench the jaws. And let it go. You work the hips. I think you may be able to do this a little better than had you come into this cold. Breathe in, breathe out. There's your full frog. However it is, it's perfect. Let's come out of it now, all right? So bring your hands under your shoulders. Bring your knees more together, but not real close. You're going to come into a puppy pose. This one's kind of fun. All right, so your hips, everybody's built differently. So just take this to, you know, how it feels right for you. Just adjust your hips. Bring your forearms down to your mat. Elbows are underneath your shoulders. Work your knees back, forward, whatever works. Your, the trick here is your forearms are on the mat and your fingers are spread wide. Now you want to think of sending your tailbone high to the sky. Just, you know, send the tailbone up, up, up to the sky. Walk your hands a little further forward to let your chest melt on down to the mat. Here's where you could use a block to bring the ground up to your chest. 
Sink it on down. Chest rests on the block or no block at all. Arms are worked forward. Forearms are on the mat. Tailbone lifted, kind of like how, you know, a puppy when they get up and want to play. Breathe in, breathe out. Let it go. That is your puppy pose. All right, now when you are breathing in, think of sending your inhale to the back of your heart. Inhale, send it to the back of your heart. Breathe. All right, puppy pose. Let's come on out of it and let's go into a toes pose and an ankle pose. All right, so we're just moving the, the spine. We move the spine a lot of different ways with our cat cow and with that puppy pose. All right, tuck your toes toward your shins. You got your blocks by your sides. Here's your toes pose. Shoulders back over your hips. Relax here. You know, your blocks can be at whatever height that gives you kind of security. That feels good. And, but you're stretching out your feet. You're seated on your heel. And you can kind of feel in the arch of your foot, the nice big stretch there. Lengthen up through the crown of your head. And if it is uncomfortable, hinge forward to take, you know, some of the pain away. But your feet tend to be really tight because they're wrapped up in shoes or boots all day long. And when do you ever let the toes spread and let the feet just feel good? They need to breathe. Take a big breath in and a big breath out. This is your toes pose. Let's take it to its complementary pose and ankle pose. Your feet are in the same position as they were when we did that thunderbolt. Come to the tops of your feet. Use your blocks to push the ground away. Lean on back, knees are together. Stretch out your ankles in this very unusual position that you don't naturally take, right? Breathe in, breathe out, but this is giving you that full range of motion in your ankles. Oh, so important. All right, come back to your toes pose if you want. Flow through this however you like. You know, holding it for a couple breaths in toes pose. Then holding it for a couple breaths in your ankle pose. To the degree that feels good for you. And here is where you could do some balancing too. You could bring your hands to prayer center and put the blocks aside. Breathe in. Soften in the shoulders, breathe out. Come on to the tops of your feet. Take it to your ankle pose. Lean on back, keeping your knees together. Let them pop on up. And hold it. Take it as far as is right for you. And play with it. It's a good pose, isn't it? All right, let's come out of it. Come to a neutral tabletop. Lift your feet up. Squeeze and scrunch your toes. Circle the ankles. Tap the tops of your feet out on your mat. Broken wing pose. We did this the other day up against the wall. So lots of ways to do it. Right now, we're going to do it a little quicker in the classic sense. Come on down to your belly. T out your right arm. The left arm is bent, hand under the collarbone. Roll onto your right shoulder, breathe. Your head is down, your right cheek is on your mat, your right ear is on the mat, your left hand is the driving force here. It's pushing into the mat. Legs can be long, knees can be bent, Top leg, the left leg, the sole of the foot can be on the mat, left knee up toward the sky. You can also bring that left leg, the one on top, behind the extended right leg and push it into the mat there. Take the variation that feels good for you. What you're after here is a nice stretch in your right shoulder. Breathe in, breathe out. When you're ready, take it to the other side. Roll onto your belly. Left arm tease out, right arm bends, roll onto your left hip, stretch it out in the shoulders here. Same thing with the top leg, bend it, sole of the foot on the earth behind you or in front of the left leg or straight or with a little bend in the knees. What you're going for is a good stretch in the left shoulder. Breathe in, breathe out, stretch it out. Feel the goodness in the left shoulder. Shoulders are stretched out. Let's come back onto your belly, hands underneath your collarbones. Press on up into a seal pose. Loosen up in your glutes, breathe. Big breath in, big breath out. Come up on your knees, spread your knees wide, wide-legged child's pose. Reach the hips back towards your heels. Bring a block to the top of your mat. Place your hands on the block, nestle your head between your arms and bring your head on down to your mat. You don't have to use the block. The block is just here to get further into your shoulders. 
And you may be able to do it now since we did that broken wing. We did a wide-legged child's pose. This is taking this wide-legged child's pose a little deeper on the block. You know best if this is good for you or not. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's finish. Come on down to your back. All right, banana asana. This is such a comfortable pose, for me at least. I hope it is for you. Come all the way down, take it slowly because you can. Arms go high overhead, palms touch. Toes point to the bottom of your mat. Stretch it out from the tips of your toes all the way through your fingers. Now, banana asana. Think of a banana, how it's curved. And bananas have all kinds of different shapes. No two bananas are alike. Shoulders are plugged into your mat. Both shoulders plugged in. We'll start with the right side. Walk your legs to the right corner of your mat. Big stretch, starting to feel it in your low body from your hips on down to your toes, oh yeah. Now that your fingers that are long and reaching at the midline of your body, let the fingers together with the hands work over to the right side of your mat. Keep your left shoulder down, keep your left hip down, breathe. Breathe, your bottom cheeks are down, your shoulders are equally down, big stretch on the left side of your body. Make the stretch even bigger if you want. The right hand, take it and capture your left wrist. Give the wrist a tug, hold it here. Keep the hip, keep the shoulder down. Stretch it out. And finish, bring your palms back to touch. Work your hands and your legs back to the midline of your body. This pose has a name too, it's called stick pose. Point your toes, reach your fingers, be long here, feel it in your hips. Lateral flexion of the spine on the other side. Feet, heels, walk to the bottom left corner of your mat or closer to it. Arms reach long and then they reach to the top left corner of your mat. Hardest part here, keep that shoulder down. A lot of people wanna stress, stress, stress. Nope, you're getting a better stretch if you keep the shoulder down. Reach through your fingers, hold on here, breathe. Your bottom is down, your shoulders are down. Intensify it if you like. The left hand captures the right wrist and you give it a slight pull. You feel the goodness in the right armpit, don't you? Ah, breathe. Soften in your jaws, soften in your shoulders because your shoulders are down. Let it feel magnificent. Slowly walk your feet back to the midline of your body as are your arms. Reach them along to the top of your room. Remember what we did in the shoulders when we did that cactus pose earlier on? Let's do it again. Release your arms, bringing your elbows to shoulder height. Forearms are parallel to the sides of your mat and your palms are face up. So you look like a reclined cactus, right? Let's add in the feet. Bend your knees, bring the soles of your feet to touch and open up your knees wide. This is your reclined goddess pose. Breathe in, breathe out. Have patience with yourself. And just hang on, endure, and let good things happen. Chest lifts as you inhale. Ah, shoulders relax as you exhale. Let it feel awesome. Now you can stay here longer, or if you wanna challenge yourself significantly, you can do a plank pose. We do a plank in just about every practice, every day. We can hold it for one minute or however long you wanna hold it. But if you wanna stay here and you're a reclined goddess, be a reclined goddess. All right, here's the deal with the plank. If you wanna stay completely on your back, find your two blocks. This is the evolution of a plank. You can take your two blocks, put the blocks on your palms, send the blocks up to the sky, and the trick here is to pull your shoulder blades back in so you can feel them on the ground. You want a lot of your upper back on the ground. 
pushing the blocks away, but keeping your shoulders hugged in and strong. This is the beginning of your being able to do your plank. And maybe this is where you always want to stay with a plank. I am going to do a different variation of plank. You get into position for the plank that you want to do. Now, the thing is, planks are so good because they tense everything up and you hold it good and strong. So good for building overall strength in everything you got. If you want, Neutral tabletop, knees come back a little bit, arms go forward a little bit, and you can hinge your weight more forward. So that's a good evolution from coming to that, from that plank on your back position. You can take so many variations of plank. If your shoulders aren't wild about it, you can bring your elbows underneath your shoulders, forearms pressed into the mat, adjust your knees, and you can stay here in a dolphin plank. On your knees or Tuck the toes and lift on up. I'm going to take a high plank. You take the variation that speaks to you. We're going to set a one minute timer just so you can measure your progress if you're into that. If you don't want to time yourself, don't. All right, I'm going to get into my high plank position. Shoulders over the wrists, legs long, core engaged, pressing into the earth. Fingers spread wide. Let's start a timer. All right, one minute. Here we go. Your fingers are spread wide. Your fingers are gecko gripping the mat. Core is engaged. Lengthen through the crown of your head. You're 10 seconds in. Lengthen through your tailbone. Hold on strong, whichever variation you're in, because you are strong. Showing up here to your practice is just strong in your mind, and that's where it begins. Guess what? We're over 20 seconds in. You've got it. Oh, we're more than halfway there. We're over halfway. Push into the earth. Hold on. Now, there are breaks you could take. You could send your hips high into a down dog and then get right back into your plank. You don't have to take a very long break. You could drop to your knees and then pop on back up when you're ready. 15 seconds to go. That means you've done it for 45 already. Breathe. <sighs> Strong. Don't give up. Less than 10. And it is now five seconds to go. Push the earth away. You can do anything for five seconds. Three, two, one, and done. Come on down. All right, take a break. Grab a drink. Wow, that's intense, isn't it? Plank is intense. It builds strength, and we all got to build strength. If you're 60, 70, 80 years old, keep at it. If you're 20, keep at it. You've got to stay strong because you'll be 60 before you know it. Trust me. <laughs> all right, take a drink. Have fun with your practice. We all need to be stronger. All right, strong. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. We got this, right? Say that to yourself. Yes, I am strong. Let's do a surfing pose. All right. It's a lunge. We're going to take it from lunge to a surf. Come to standing on your knees. Find your two blocks. Right knee comes forward. Knee over ankle. Use the blocks to push into and send your left leg long. You can put a towel under your left knee. You want to feel a big stretch in your left hip flexor. Hands can be on your blocks. You want to stretch out your hips. We all sit way too much. We all do. We're all guilty of it. We sit way too much and these muscles in the front of our hips shorten. Breathe, lengthen them out here, breathe. Maybe bring your shoulders more over your hips. That's more easily said than done. It is hard, I know that, but stick with it. The only way it's gonna get better is if you consistently do it. All right, fingertips into your block or shoulders over your hips. Maybe your arms can come high, reach through your fingertips and take a baby back bend or not. Hands back to prayer center, hold it on here. Breathe, interlace your fingers, hands onto your thigh. Press your knee forward as you press into your interlaced fingers, sending the knee more forward, feeling this intensify in your left front hip flexor. And if you don't like it, peel it back a layer. Breathe, all right, time to surf. Hands come down to the block, straighten the right leg, send your hips back, and then rebend the right knee. So straighten and bend the right leg. You've got the blocks. Walk the blocks back when your hips come back. Walk them forward as your hips go forward. You're stable. You've brought the ground up to you with these blocks. Maybe you take it so far, you sit onto your back heel. Then you come forward. Breathe. Ah, maybe you say, I'm not gonna use the blocks because my core is so strong after doing that plank. I'm gonna do my surfing pose without the blocks. It's all good. The fact you're doing makes it good. All right, finish. 
All right, knees together. Refind your blocks. Left foot forward. Knee over ankle. Hands press into the blocks. Right legs turn to go long. Ah, breathe. And if you stay right here, A plus. Hold on. You got it. Maybe shoulders more over the hips. Maybe arms reach up. Arms reach. Baby back bend. Maybe arms go back up. Hands come back to the blocks or interlaced fingers. Press into your left thigh, pressing the knee forward, sending the right hip good and long in that great deep stretch. Time to surf. That sounds like fun. Hands onto your blocks. Start to straighten and bend the left knee. And, and get out of your head that you can't do it far enough or you can't do it right. You're doing it just right as long as it doesn't hurt. Every little bit of movement leads to greater movement later. Use it or lose it, right? And your motion is lotion for your joints. Remember, you can do it without the blocks, too, because you're strong. You are strong. No matter how old you are, as long as you keep at it, you got it. All right, finish up with your surfing. Let's come down, both knees to your mat. Work your hands forward, come down to your belly, elbows under your knees, sphinx pose. Compression of your low back. Elbows under shoulders, hands open wide, gaze down your nose, soften in your backside. Little compression of the low back. Breathe in, breathe out. Ah, let it go. That's your Sphinx pose. Let's come out of it. Slip your hands under your collarbones, press into straightening arms. Soften in your backside. Take it even deeper in this seal pose. Come on out of it. Come down to your bottom. Find your strap or your towel. Toes up toward the sky. Knees straight or a little bend in them. That feels better. You know, kind of nice to soften in the knees. No, don't lock them out and stress out. No stress here. This is yoga. All right, lengthen up to the crown of your head. Take your strap or your towel or nothing at all. Place it under the centers of your feet and give it a pull. Give your feet a pull. Look forward, breathe, hold on. You got it. If you got the strap, you can do this. And you know, it doesn't matter how far forward you're pulling. Just hold on to that strap and pull. Maybe you interlace your fingers and send them underneath your feet. Breathe, hinge forward, bring your gaze toward your knees. Come on up, shoulders over your hips. Let's take our two blocks, spread our legs wide, bring your blocks between your legs. Lengthen up through the crown of your head, toes up toward the sky, bring your forearms toward your blocks, lengthen up, exhale, fold more forward. Think of bringing your chest more to your blocks. Maybe remove a block as time goes on. Maybe bring a forehead, a forehead, your forehead to the blocks. Adjust the height, let it be. Arms can capture your heels, your ankles, or reach forward. Remember how we reached forward for that block earlier? Maybe you do it again here. Breathe in, breathe out. And then soften up. Come on up, shoulders over your hips. And maybe you're measuring, you know, your progress as far as the height of your blocks go. It's up to you, make it work. All right, so we're gonna come down. Let's take it slowly, but before you come down, grab your towel and your eye shade and bring them up by your hips or by your shoulders. So you can reach them in a moment, come to fully reclined. Bend your left knee, send your right leg into a figure four outside of the right ankle on top of the left knee. Your legs are in a figure four. Breathe here, push the inner right thigh open. Breathe in, breathe out. You got it. Lift your left knee up, lift your left foot up. Breathe, hold it. Draw the left knee toward the chest. Draw the outside of the right knee toward the bottom of your mat. Hands, interlaced fingers can go underneath your right knee or that towel that's nearby. Maybe you place the towel under your left knee and hug it in, squeeze it in. You got it. Keep your shoulders down. 
Place the left foot down, place the right foot down. Your knees are still bent. Now this time, lift your left leg up outside of the left ankle on top of the right knee. Push the inner left thigh open. Staying here is perfect. Maybe you lift the right foot up. Right knee comes toward the chest as you're driving the outside of the left knee toward the bottom of your mat. Maybe you take your interlaced fingers or your towel underneath the knee and hug it in. Shoulders are soft and on your mat, hugging the knee in. Very nice. Reclined figure four, reclined pigeon, goes by a lot of names. Breathe. Right foot down, left foot down, bridge pose to stretch out both hip flexors at the same time. Push the weight into your feet, lift your hips up, arms down by your sides, wiggle your shoulders closer together. Think of creating a shelf for your heart. Hip flexors, both in the front of your hips are really stretching out at the same time. Push hard into your feet. Interlace your fingers behind your low back. Press your pinkies into your mat. Breathe, hips are lifted, strong, strong, low body. Breathe, release your fingers, release your arms down by your sides, roll your spine down one vertebra at a time. Arms tee out, palms face down. Toe heel your feet to the edges of your mat and then let your knees fall to the right, then to the left. Knees fall right, knees fall left. Your windshield wipering your legs. Back into the hips. <sighs> All right, let's compound this a little bit. When the knees fall to the left, let your gaze go to the right, keeping both shoulders down. Knees come up as you inhale, so does your gaze. Exhale, knees fall to the other direction, and then your gaze goes in the other direction. Knees up, gaze up. Knees and legs fall in opposite direction in this windshield wiper variation. So you're getting a little massage on the back of your skull too. That feels pretty good. All right, let's finish up. Toe, heel, your feet in a little bit more so that they are in line with your quads. Arms down by your sides. Press your hips on back up to your bridge pose. Release your spine down one vertebra at a time. Everything's back to the midline. Now toe heel your feet out again to the edges of your mat. Let your knees fall to the right side, both knees. This time we're gonna take this a, a, a reclined deer pose and we're gonna pin the left knee down. How are we gonna do that? Lift your right leg up and the outside of your right ankle is gonna go on top of the outside of your left thigh. And then let the legs come back down. So you're pinning that outside leg down. Arms tee out, look in the opposite direction of which your knees are falling. Gaze goes up, unpin your knees, and your gaze goes up and your knees go up. Let your knees fall to the left side of your body. Knees are falling to the left side of your body, neither knee is, is touching the ground. I'm going to lift my left leg up, taking the outside of my left ankle on top of my right knee, and now I can work the knee down even closer to the earth. Knees are falling to the left. Left ankle is pinning the right knee down, and I'm going to look to the right. Breathe in. <sighs> Breathe out. Your hips have so much potential range of motion. Work them and find it, but just be patient. It'll come in time. Breathe in, breathe out. All right, release that left ankle from the right knee. Gaze goes up, knees go up, legs go long on your mat. Stick pose, arms reach overhead, toes point. Breathe. Now release the arms down by your sides. As your arms are down by your sides, let your left leg stay long. Make it even longer by driving the heel of your left foot to the bottom of the mat. Bend the right knee, hug the right knee in with either your towel or your strong arms. Elbows hugged in, circle your ankle this way and that. Let your, right, let your left hand guide your right knee across the midline of your body. Tee out your right arm, look to the right. Hip comes down, gaze goes up, hug the knee in, circle the ankle. 
Right leg releases, right heel drives to the bottom of the mat, left knee bends, interlaced fingers, hug the left knee in. Use your towel if you want, circle the ankle. Right hand guides the left knee across the midline of your body, roll onto the right hip, gaze to the left, left arm tees out. This is your supine twist. As you're ready, hip comes down, left knee hugs in, circle the ankle this way and that. Happy baby pose. Left knee towards your left armpit, right knee towards your right armpit. Rock a little bit from side to side. Maybe that feels super good and that's where you want to stay. All right, for your happy baby, reach inside your calves. Maybe reach nice and low toward your ankles. Maybe hold on to your ankles and pull on your ankles, sending your knees more toward your armpit. Maybe you can reach your heels even. Draw your toes toward your shins to lock in that hand heel connection. Maybe send your right leg up to the sky, nice and straight, the left leg still bent, and then bend the right leg and send the left leg high to the sky. Drive through the heel, happy baby pose. Ananda Balasana, like a happy baby, laying on its back, not even thinking about the <laughs> intensity of this pose. But you can move like a happy little baby again if you just keep at it, keep trying. Maybe today you're just holding on to the legs and just moving the legs a little bit. It's all good. Let's finish up. Release your hands from your heels. Bring your knees back to the midline and then bring your heels on down to your mat. Ah, let's go into our final Shavasana pose. I'm going to do a little different variation today. I'm going to cover my eyes with my eye shade or my towel. That's always great. And instead of sending my legs long, it's up to you. You can do the variation you want. There's hundreds of variations. I'm going to bend my knees, opening up my knees to the side of the room and having my legs in that like cobbler-like pose, soles of the feet touching. That feels good to me today. Maybe it does for you too. You know, an option, you could put your blocks under your knees. Oh, that feels even better. You might want to try it. Eyes covered with the eye shade of the towel, arms down by your sides, and get comfortable. Maybe wiggle your shoulders closer to your spine. Eyes closed. Breath deep. Soften the area between the eyebrows and just let go. It's not easy for anyone. You're not alone. Just be patient with you. You're the person you should be the kindest to. Be patient and just be with your breath in stillness for a few more moments. Soften in your face, that area between your eyebrows where we all hold tension, just let it go. Shoulders are soft and away from your ears and nestled into your mat. Acknowledge the thoughts that invade your space and, you know, just say, all right, I'm thinking, but I'm going to come back to that thought later. Just let it go right now. No more thinking, just breath.
Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And stay here longer. If this is just really, really good right now, you can hit the mute button and stay here as long as you like. Keep the thoughts at bay and just see what happens. Breathe. If it's time for you to wrap up this hour and move forward, you can do so by taking a big breath in and a big sighing breath out. Let it go as you prepare to re-enter the world of craziness. Start to wiggle your fingers and your toes and work your feet apart and circle your wrists and your ankles if that feels good. Just reintroducing motion into the extremities of your body. Right now your wrists and your ankles. Take a big stretch like it's your first good morning stretch by reaching high up over your head, bringing your hands back down to your mat, stretching out through the toes, through the fingers, stretch it out. And then bend your knees and come into a fetal position onto one side or the other. Roll onto that hip and onto that shoulder. Bend the low arm and use the bicep as a pillow for your heavy head. Top shoulder is relaxed away from the ears. Eyes are closed. Present moment is just this breath. Savor a deep cycle of breath here. As you're ready, slowly float on up, using your hands or not. Float on up and come into a comfortable seated position, whatever that is. <laughs> Keeping your eyes closed, maybe because you know where your body is in space. Bring your palms together to touch. Shoulders over your hips, lengthen up through your spine. Shoulders, send them back and down. You are strong, your neck is long. As you inhale, lengthen up through the crown of your head. And as you exhale, soften the shoulders even more and be firmly rooted into your mat. Take another deep cycle of breath and think of these things as you breathe. Gently blink, your eyes open. You did it. You did a one hour long yoga practice. I hope you practiced patient endurance. I like that phrase, patient endurance with yourself. Stress number you took in the beginning, what was it? And what is it now? It's an important little measure. You feel better in your head. When you feel better in your head, you feel better in your body and in your soul. It's a good thing. All right, you're on your yoga journey. Live this good feeling off of your mat today. You're, it's all on, you know, we're all on our journey. We're all on different journeys. Our journeys deviate here and there, but come back to your yoga. Come back to your mat. Come back to your breath and come back to who you are inside. And most importantly, on your journey, don't stop believing in your abilities because you can do it. All right, you really can. All right, I'm sending you love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and patient endurance. Love you guys. See you on your mats tomorrow. Bye. Hey, you knew that, don't you? Puppy pose. Excellent. Good. Right on cue. <laughs> Have a good day, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> You're a good girl. You're just a good girl. You did it. You started, and now you finished. But we're an ongoing work of art in progress, aren't we? All of us are. Thank you for sticking around. Come back tomorrow. Come back every single day. Do what you can with what you got. You know all that, and I'm happy for your being here. Tell your friends about us. Tell your friends about our yoga. It's free for anybody and everybody. We're here live every day for you, for them. Have them practice with us. They will benefit a lot from it, and you know that. If you'd like to join our practice, you can watch us on Facebook and YouTube, and you know that too. If you'd like to support our broadcast, you can visit our website. It's www.316yoga.com. Join us, have fun, do your yoga, and stay happy. See you on your mats tomorrow.